Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for yet another episode here of Knight Brothers Commentary, coming to you to bring another um, another little twist. We've talked a lot about Marvel. We're going to take a sidestep into DC, um, but but still reviewing uh, kind of a superhero theme, if you will, the new Batman movie uh, that was recently released earlier this month. Um, really excited to talk about it. We went uh, as a family, our brother Ryan and our dad, and we went to a late night Quite a late evening, but well worth it. Um, I thought it was a great film, very fun, entertaining film, um, and we're going to dive into it. So, Matt, with that, let's kick it off. Yeah, this film was, for me, definitely one of the better DC films as of late. The film kind of starts off with Batman and uh, Gordon investing the Gotham City's mayor. Yep. And I think one of the things that really just really disturbed me about the scene was the fact that the dude basically had his head taped around yeah it's it, to me i don't know i mean i was just getting like saw vibes from that <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit of that it was definitely a uh, they made it known that whoever the killer was was i don't want to say enjoying this but had some sort of it wasn't just they weren't satisfied with just killing people yeah they, they wanted it to be about something more and that clearly that picture clearly started to come together as the film ran on but there were there was early foreshadowing that they were dealing with somebody who had other motives at play yeah i mean the way i see it the main villain of this film is the riddler yeah and they really kind of transformed the riddler into basically kind of like the joker himself it, 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 so it's funny you say that matt i went back and watched the dark knight because it's streaming on netflix right now yeah and I I watched it a day or two after we saw this new Batman. Yeah. And I felt the exact same way. I was because a lot of that, you know, while it's two different, you know, backstories, Riddler, Joker, you you think about the Dark Knight and Heath Ledger's version, even just like the Harvey Dent thing where it was like, you know, he had two guys in the room. He was basically marking his next target to be Harvey Dent. Yeah. And he had two individuals that he had killed. One was – I'm just going to, I'm going to screw up the names that it was like James Harvey and Eric Dent or something like that. Yeah. Um, and so all these little clues and the Joker cards and the things yeah. like that, that's, it was the Riddler was in it, in my opinion, very much inspired by Heath, Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah. And that's not really true to the comic book version of the Riddler. The comic book version of the Riddler is a lot more uh, comedic really. Like the Jim Carrey Riddler. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very much. Yeah, Jim Carrey's portrayal was very, was very much more accurate to the comics. Though so, I didn't just. I mean, to be fair, I mean, to, to Jim Carrey, I mean, I mean, his performance was, was actually pretty good, though the overall movie sucked. Let's just get that out of the way. George Clooney Batman, easily the worst Batman of all time. I'm just gonna put it down here in the comments. <laughs> Let me know what you think, but I, I am, I can't stand watching those movies. They're so bad. They're- I feel like we saw we saw Jim Carrey as the Joker. No, Wait, Jim Carrey was the Riddler. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Riddler. You had Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy. Oh, remember that? Oh my God. She had she had some version of Bane. Remember that? Was it Bane? I think that that, that I, I could have sworn it was Mister Freeze as or it no, was no no. There was Mr. Freeze in that movie too as Arnold Schwar- or Arnold Schwarzenegger was Mister Freeze, but Poison Ivy had that almost Frankenstein. Esque version of Bane. Okay, so oh, you know what I'm talking about? That had the little like tubes coming out of him, and oh, it, you know, you're right. I think it was Bane. Maybe it was something, and I don't was something else. Okay, it might have been like a Solomon Grundy Bane hybrid character. But the way I see it, this Batman was actually really good. I actually enjoyed Robert Pattinson a lot more than I thought, and here's the reason why: they didn't do the traditional Batman. In the sense of uh, basically just kind of like the rich playboy who is like very confident. He right. this is this is a Batman who is very insecure about himself and his abilities. Yeah. Though, despite showing to the contrary that he is probably the best detective version of any movie Batman we have ever seen. Say what you I mean. His fight sequences were really good. I still think Ben Affleck still had the better fight choreography. Okay. Though Ben Affleck's Batman was very very much not in tune with Batman's morals at all from the comics. Yeah. And I love that Robert Pattinson really stayed true to Batman's morality. Yeah. You really saw that, especially throughout the 
the later stages of the film. I felt like this film, unlike some of the others, George Clooney, you know, Ben Affleck, et cetera, some of the previous ones, this felt very close to The Dark Knight. I felt like yeah, it, it, that, it, that, 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 and I shouldn't just say The Dark Knight because you know, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Retur- Returns or Rises or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it very much has that same similar feel to uh, Christian Bell's Batman, yeah, yeah. but it does differ in the sense that it really kind of puts more focus on Batman's raw intelligence and detective abilities, whereas I want to say Christian Bale's Batman really didn't do much of that. It, at least I don't really feel like he no. did. And they and they did play up Christian Bale's more as that playboy, millionaire, yeah. you know, lifestyle. I mean, yeah, that was basically more of uh, Christian Bale's portrayal. Yeah. This one really kind of focuses more on, the way I see it, this this version of uh, Batman is basically where Bruce Wayne is very much the side character in his, in his life, yeah. whereas Batman pretty much takes center stage. Batman is pretty much, being Batman was basically the main priority in his life as opposed yeah. to, Really trying to have that balance between. Hundred percent. He was Batman. I mean, it was like I, I think back to you know, um, gosh, like Thor Ragnarok, where you know, um, I, I'm going to screw up. I, I forget. It's Mark. What is it? Ruffalo. Yeah. Um, you know, talks about how the Hulk, you know, took the wheel for two years. Yeah. And and put, you know, Banner in the back seat. That's kind of how I feel like with this Batman. Batman was his life. Yeah. He was Batman. He he was not Bruce Wayne. The, the Bruce Wayne, you know, when he came out for the mayor's funeral, I feel like the, the city felt like they were seeing a ghost. Yeah. You know, like, oh, my gosh, you know, Bruce Wayne, we haven't seen him in forever. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, you definitely got that feel. Yeah. Where, where that wasn't the case, you know, with Christian Bale, where he was, you know, Christian Bale was hosting the, the cocktail party for Harvey Dent, was obviously yeah. – you know, uh, had some business dealings going on with Lau. He was just more active in the Bruce Wayne character. Exactly. Um, but I, I, you said something before that I want to agree with. I was pleasantly surprised by Robert Pattinson's portrayal uh, of Batman. I didn't know what to expect. I, you know, I had obviously, you know, I think of Twilight or, you know, even even like Harry Potter when he was, you know, cast as uh, Cedric Diggory. Yeah, you know, and to I, be fair, I mean, he actually does pretty well with that character too. One hundred percent. And I just, I guess, I didn't know how his take would be on it, but I, yeah. I thought it was very believable. I thought he did a good job. I thought his, to your point, he sold that detective piece where he was, you know, a very intellectual Batman, and you yeah. could tell he was frustrated all throughout the movie that intellectually he continued to be a step behind yeah. the Riddler. Yeah. Um, and because I think he's someone that prided himself on his intellectual abilities yeah. and, you know, the Riddler was just so twisted in his, yeah. you know, in his, in his crimes that I think it was hard to, hard for yeah. Batman to, to get out in front of it. And, and ultimately he never yeah. quite did. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, Something that I really enjoyed about this movie was the chemistry between Robert Pattinson Mm -hmm. and uh, Catwoman. Yep. I mean, say what you want, but the chemistry between them was amazing. Like there was – it very very much had that feel of the will-they-won't-they relationship from the comics. I mean, it's not necessarily – romantic or sexual at this point it's basically just kind of like a pure platonic stage right now yeah that i think is probably going to change as this series goes on at least i mean i was just impressed by her performance i was just going to say she was phenomenal i don't know the actress's name i mean she is easily the best cat woman we've seen so far in my opinion She, she did a phenomenal job and and really had you guessing i i mean in terms of you know, they put her in situations where you didn't really know what she was going to do. Um, you know, I think I think about when she was coming for the money and she saw her friend in the body bag. I think about the scene where she had the um, officer on the rooftop and she was like trying to convince every, you know, Batman and Gordon to kill him. Yeah. And I think about when she went after her dad, you know, Falcone. And, yeah. and you know, what was she? I, I just kept wondering, OK, what is she really going to do here? Yeah. Um, and I, I liked that aspect of the film. She was unpredictable, you know, yeah. and, and she's kind of a, 
I don't know what kind of character I would call her. I mean, she had her She's own. She's basically an antihero, really. Yeah, I, yeah, that's a great term for it because she had her own her own character arc um, that I do think will end up. I think we'll see her again. You know? Oh, I mean, there's no doubt we're going to see her again. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Yeah. Now, kind of going back to the plot. For me, I feel like the way the penguin was kind of portrayed, mm-hmm. definitely accurate to what's in the comics, but yeah. definitely the sideshow, really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the main, like I said earlier, the main villain is Riddler for sure. Yeah. But the way the movie ended, and I feel like he's probably going to be the main villain of the next movie. Right. Or just kind of like how the movie was really kind of. I mean, probably the biggest theme that the Riddler was hinting at, and I think it's probably going to be like the main theme of this of, a, of this Batman series, is government corruption. Yeah. And I think a really, really good villain, or at least a group of villains, would be the Court of Owls. Okay. And by all means, if you're more comic book savvy than I am, please let me know. But the way I see it, the, the Court of Owls is basically kind of like like the Illuminati of Gotham, of Gotham City, if you will. Okay, interesting. Yeah, That's so they, I mean, they're basically just kind of like running the show behind the scenes. The shadow, behind yeah. the veil. I don't know what they're going to do with Penguin. Obviously, he got shot at, you know, or there was, you know, when yeah. Falcone got shot. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see how they don't end up making the Joker some, because we got the teaser at the yeah, end I mean, of the Yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, the Joker was definitely teased. That's one thing about the film I did not like. I mean, because the way I don't know, it just feels like a repeat character, really. Yeah, we've we've because we, we've seen it with the Riddler now, yeah, and we've seen the Joker so many times with Jack Nicholson and especially Heath Ledger. It's just and like Jared Leto and Jared Leto, so and Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, we've seen so many different versions of the Joker. It's just like, geez, I, I, I mean, we know that he's like the main villain for for Batman, but come on. Would, Give him a break and just kind of focus on other villains. I think you've seen a lot of, and while everybody's done a little bit of a different take, I still prefer the Heath Ledger Joker. Fair I think, enough. I, I think he was the most compelling um, villain. But yeah, I, I'm with you. I think that that it, I don't want to ever say too soon. I mean, the reality is they're cranking out these Batman films. You know, we're getting a new Batman every couple of years. It seems like. Now here's the thing. I mean, this is the first solo Batman film. Since the Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, this is the first solo film in 10 years. Think about that for a second. It's been 10 years since the Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. I, I, you know, you had Ben Affleck in there in a couple different. Yeah, because you, know, you basically had him. Be Superman and, and Justice then just League. League. Yeah. So I, we've seen the character, I guess. And we've seen, you know, Joaquin Phoenix was the background story of the Joker. You had Jared Leto in, what was it, Suicide Squad. Yeah. That you saw his version of the Joker. So we've seen, you know, parts of this um story told in a lot of different ways i didn't realize this was the first solo film um since the dark knight rises i i I mean matt i was just talking talking to another family member tonight at dinner i was entertained the entire movie oh absolutely i mean i was on the edge of my seat the whole time yeah i mean i mean the tension i mean between batman and the riddler was so good yeah because it's like is batman finally going to get the jump on him i mean there's a i mean i don't know maybe it's just me but i felt like I mean, there's just that one thing. Batman sees it, and it's like, oh, maybe this is it. Yeah. Maybe this is where we finally catch him. And it's like, no. Well, Especially I, the thing with the with the little bird thing going on. Yeah. And then the penguin basically comes out and says, dude, you don't know your Spanish. Right. <laughs> yeah. like, because I felt like the whole film really positioned the Riddler as – there was a lot of similarities between the Batman and the Riddler. Yeah, exactly. Okay? And, you know, the whole orphan story yeah. and the whole, um, you know, and then they they really played that up when at the beginning of the film, when you saw the Riddler, you know, before he killed the mayor. Yeah. You were seeing it from his vantage point almost yeah. inside his, you know, yeah. goggles or mask or whatever. Well, then later in the film, we got the same vantage point from the Batman when he was sort of spying on uh Selena Kyle, Catwoman. Yeah. Um, so you just, they started to play up all these uh, similarities between the hero and the villain. And I think, you know, to me, the underlying story, and I don't know what the directors or producers intended, but to me, it's like there's a fine line between that order and chaos. You know, you can have two very similar people and somebody chooses to bring, you know, 
to use their unique skill set for good and somebody chooses it to to bring chaos yeah. you know and and we all have that choice and i think you know the movie does a good job of of showing why choosing good is is typically the right way to go not typically it is um yeah what else matt though I, i'm sorry we're just talking about a lot of different things yeah here. for me I know part of me really does want to see Arkham Asylum in this series, and I that might be safe for the third movie. Well, I was gonna say, it, or it could be the second. It could be the second because with the Joker tease, yeah, and the fact that they talked about Arkham in relation to Batman's mother because yeah. she was supposedly spent some time in Arkham, or her parents did. I could no, it was her mother. It, it was, was his mother. Okay, yeah. So there was a there was an Arkham tie. Yeah. with his mom having suffered some mental illness or yeah. something like that. Which to me is the perfect segue into that yeah. plot line. Yeah, because maybe like Joker. Batman, so maybe Robert Pattinson's Batman is probably going to try to do some exploration on his own. Yeah. And then basically has to fight a whole bunch of villains in Arkham Asylum. Most likely going to be Riddler and Joker team up, if that's say, the it, case. It seems to me like we're going to get the Riddler and the Joker together. And maybe that's why some of this film positioned the Riddler as a, you know, with, with some Joker-esque type tendencies, if you will, yeah. in the way that he was framing out some of this stuff. I mean, like... The, Especially the scene where basically the guy who basically just ruins uh, the mayor's funeral by driving in and killing people. Oh, just people. this exact scene. I, it just felt like the Joker to me. To me, it felt more like the Riddler because that's kind of what the Riddler really does. Okay. Like He basically poses riddles to Batman all the time while they fight. Yeah. Or at least that's just my personal take on on what I've read, but... No, I, I just, I guess from that perspective, it just felt like, okay, so I, in in my opinion, I felt like that scene very much mirrored the scene where, where Joker got himself locked up in the MCU and was like, basically, hey, we're going to play a little game and we're going to find out, you know, where your true loyalty lies. And this is when he had, you know, he had Harvey Dent and he had, um, Oh gosh, what what is her name? Um, oh, it was it was uh, like Rachel Blythe. Rachel name? Rachel Dawes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So he, you know, the Joker had set up this almost game of, hey, we're gonna ma- see what happens here, you yeah. know. And I felt like that was kind of there was a little bit of that. In I the, mean, to be fair, I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah, it was. Just, I mean, I thought it was well done. I just it was well done. I mean, it yeah. was. I mean, it's definitely one of the most tense scenes in the movie for sure. Yeah, but. The difference between the Riddler and the Joker in that scenario is that the Joker doesn't really use riddles, whereas the Riddler, folks, I mean, that's kind of like his whole stick. Yeah. I mean, Joker, I mean, don't get me wrong, he's definitely a dark comedian. Like, he basically tries to play people with jokes and all that, but it's not necessarily riddles. Yeah. It's not necessarily, like, posing questions as riddles and trying to force you to figure out it's just more like it's a little more chaotic exactly and that and that's so it reminds me of the line from the dark knight when alfred um says you know some he gives the example of um you know somebody stealing rubies uh and and just giving them out to the kids and he goes you know some men just want to see the world burn you know they don't have a motive they can't be bribed they can't be bought or paid for they just You know, that's just how they're wired. And I feel like that's more of that total chaos from the Joker. Yeah. The Riddler, especially in this film, clearly... Was not. Yeah. The Riddler was not about just seeing the world burn. No, he was very calculated. Yeah, it was very calculated. He was very much, I want to expose the the corruption for what it is. Yeah. He he had a clear, calculated... Yeah, don't get me wrong. Yeah, he had a very clear life and... Yeah, his motives were very calculated and clear. He was not about just destroying everything just for the sake of it. It was just about, I want to see this corrupt institution go down. Right. To be fair, he is not above using violence and basically destroying the city. Like, yeah. he's not above that. Right. But it's not simply just for that. Yeah. It's calculated chaos rather than just unbridled chaos. Yeah. I, I mean, and that's really the main difference between this version of the Riddler that we've seen for, and uh, basically most Jokers. Yeah. I think it would be very interesting to see how they delineate between the two, understanding that we're probably going to get the Joker and the Riddler in a film together or in some, you know, I, I don't know if they're going to pass the torch or whatever's going to happen. Yeah. You know, the two of them are in the cell next to one another at yeah. the end of the movie. And so we'll, 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 
I certainly look forward to it. I, I oh, think, I know. I'm looking forward to that movie. <laughs> and you said something at the beginning. This was one of the best DC films I've seen. I mean, it is easily one of the best DC films as of late, for sure. Yeah. I yeah. mean, DC has had a lot of, uh, shall we say, mishaps, really. Yeah, they've, they've had some misses. So, I mean... I mean, Justice League is probably the biggest one, really. And Marvel had just done such a good job, um, in my opinion. You know, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, the difference between Marvel and DC this time around is that Marvel really took their time. They really tried to establish the story and the characters first before they did all of the all the team up stuff. Yeah. You know. Whereas, in my opinion, I felt like Warner Brothers just rushed to the team up stuff without really developing the characters first. Yeah. Well, and he, I mean, you said it. This is the first standalone Batman film in ten years. Yeah, you know. So, so I'm thinking this is going to be a reboot for the DCEU. I hope it's a reboot for the for the yeah. DCEU. Uh, I think it would be smart to do that because clearly, you know, it, when you do develop the individual characters, it makes it so much more impactful when you come together for a film like Avengers or Justice League yeah. or even Batman v Superman. That was kind of the civil war, if you will, yeah. of Marvel. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, it just, there wasn't enough invested in those characters. On I mean, the there really side. wasn't. I mean, it was pretty much, I mean, Batman v Superman was mostly a Batman movie, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, it just felt like a Batman movie with Superman and, one, and Wonder Woman thrown and, in. And Civil War, to me, felt like an Avengers film. And that's true. I mean, I know it was a Captain America film. But it definitely felt like Avengers 2.5. Yeah, I mean, it was like, okay, we've got every, I mean, they... There, they, there were a lot of scenes. I mean, even the end of the film, you still had, you know, three key characters, basically hashing it out. Yeah. Um, you know. So, anyways, I, I, I overall, I would, I would give high marks to this film. I mean, I think they could have. Listen, it, it, it was long. Three hours is a long time. It dragged on a little bit. They, they probably could have tightened something up, but. I, it never lost my interest. That's and, true, and I agree with that. It's a little long, but it, I, but I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. Yep. Anything else, Matt, before we bring it in for a landing here? I think we're good. Awesome. Night Brothers Commentary signing off.